Hi everybody and welcome to my office in Tacoma. My name's Imogen Salzman, I'm a psychologist. I have a little practice in Tacoma, strangely called Upway Psychology, uh, but I'm in Tacoma and some of you will know me um, because we've been talking about doing a community building activity called, like, uh, it's called, I'm gonna call it the Open Forum, but it, but open forums have been around for a, for a while. Um, what are they? What are they? What's an open forum? An open forum is an activity where our community comes together um, to to try and discuss and and look at a difficult issue that affects all of us that's very hard to talk about. And I think you know if, if you've ever had anything you've had to keep a secret or you're embarrassed about. Or something's going on for you that you feel like no one understands or no one's going to help you with you'll know what I mean so I've been talking about hosting an open forum for a while with lots of people that I work with and a few colleagues and people in our community and I've collected some questions people have asked me about well you know what it what is this thing you're trying to do here what is this open forum thing that you're trying to do and I'd like to just apologize for my hay fever it is hay fever season and there may be some ridiculous sneezing in a minute. I'll try and keep that to a minimum because I hate taking antihistamines. <laughs> but you know, we're getting to that stage in November where it's unavoidable. All right, on to the questions. What is an open forum? Okay, well look, it's it, like, it's, what we actually do, we, it, it happens over roughly two nights. Um, so the first night we, I and my, my helpful team of facilitators um, have invited some speakers to to try and try and help us break the ground on a difficult topic and a difficult topic we're going to try and tackle next year it's very topical at the moment it's come out of the me too movement and all over the world people are talking about this in different ways our topic is going to be women and violence so this is a very big topic it's been around for millennia and we as a human race we still haven't quite got there in working this one out so so i thought well let's have a go let's try and do this so we have we have an open forum happens over two nights the first night is called the speakers night and that's when our community will gather we'll probably have some teas and coffees and, and a little bit of a break in the middle and we'll have a chat with each other and try and meet each other and and build a few relationships but what we're really coming together to do is listen to some speakers talk about different parts of this topic because it's a very big topic there's a lot of ground to to cover um, people might have heard of a book re recently published by by investigative journalist called Jess Hill it's called uh, see what you made me do it's a very good um, examination of the, the secrecy of behind the secrecy and the silence of of women, children and men living with the experience of domestic abuse or domestic violence. So that's like the darker end of the topic. But we also have, um, you know, there's a lot, there's historical, um, psychological information and perspectives. So, we're, and we're, there's re lots of research we've got to have a think about. There's also violence between women, women to women violence, which happens a lot and is very rarely talked about. So this, this is a huge topic. So on the first night, we're going to meet and and listen sort of passively to to the speakers break open the topic. And on the second night, called the discussion night, we'll all have a bit of dinner. I hope that's the, that's the plan. And then we'll come together as a community with my helpful team of facilitators. And we are going to try as a group to talk about authentically, honestly, bravely, curiously about this topic. So some people will feel perhaps to share some stories. Some people will, will not want to share. They, they may just want to listen. And that's a really important person in, a, in an open forum is the people who come to listen. What else can I tell you about this? Um, this is an activity that helps us build relationships and reach behind the curtain of secrecy that happens in, in every culture. There's things we can talk about, there's things we're happy to be, there's things we don't want to talk about and we're not happy to be. So, and though people in situations like that, get, it's very hard to help them. It's very hard to heal those problems, but they, they do end up affecting the whole community, affect all of us. Radio, let's go to my next question, which is, 
why did you choose the topic women and violence? So I've covered this just a little bit. So the Me Too movement has really broken open the, um, the global dialogue of just what women are living with all over the world and, and, and violence is such a complex topic. It's, it's not simple, it's not simple, it's not just men, although that is a big part of the topic. And in my work as a psychologist, I've been working, I've had a career that's just over 20 years practicing. I'm, I've seen between five and 8,000 cases in that time. And there is an enormous problem with domestic violence. Jess Hill calls it domestic abuse, a cult cultural violence that's very hard for us to talk about in Australia for lots of complex reasons. So as my career developed, I saw this problem getting bigger and bigger and harder and harder to heal on the one-to-one -one level, on the individual level. It became clear to me that it was much more a community issue than just a therapeutic issue. So I thought, what can I do? I have to think about this problem. Um, I think it's a super important topic for us to deal with in Australia because we are a nation of um, First Nations people, but we're also a nation of people that have come here as immigrants under varying degrees of trauma and political and economic, in, in a way a lot, we're all political and economic refugees. This is a very complex topic to try and build community around. So in 1788, a, a culture was imported into Australia that was defined at that time by abuse, abuse of children, abuse of people. Um, Europe was, especially in the UK, were undergoing the, the social effects of the Industrial Revolution and, and there was massive social change that were, people were not adapting to. So crime was really high, children were being exploited and abused. And a lot of those problems were shipped without any refinement to Australia and instituted by the government and the structures that arrived here from England. It's a very big topic, very complicated, very hard for us to talk about and resolve as a group in Australia, you know, to even 200 years on, it's really hard to deal with. So my, my thoughts were we could, we could try and wade into the conversation gently as a group and have a go. What else can I tell you here? There needs to, I believe there needs to be some truth telling about this for all of us. We've got to do some truth telling around who we are, where we came from, what we brought with us, what we're doing with that now, how we relate to that stuff now. This is kind of what you do in therapy and counselling. And I believe we also need to do it as a group. What else can I tell you about that? I think a lot of people in Australia, it's a lot of women are speaking up and saying that the domestic violence situation in Australia is an epidemic, but it's a silent and secret epidemic that's extremely hard to talk about. And people that are suffering in this situation feel embarrassed, humiliated, shamed. And sometimes it's incredibly risky to actually speak about it. It can be physically dangerous. It, it's definitely psychologically dangerous. You can isolate and, and um, and make it a million times worse just by speaking about it as one person without support. Okay, radio. I feel that we need to try and deal with this at the gra at a grassroots level. Have a go in our local communities and try and build support with each other in our own neighbourhoods to to have some kind of positive impact on this very complicated topic. So that's why I'm. Um, going to try and do this. Okay, so next question someone will ask, well, who are you? Why, why, what's your background? <laughs> why would you, why would we trust you to do, to have a go at this? Well, that's a good question. So I'm a, I'm a psychologist, I'm a counselling psychologist, which means for people who, who are interested in this sort of thing, I'm a member of a college with the APS. I'm also um, a herbalist. I've, I've been trained as a medical herbalist and as a traditional herbalist. And I'm also a registered nurse. <laughs> just to, And I run a little um, healing, counselling, therapeutic healthcare practice in, in the hills in Melbourne. And I live in Tacoma, home of the McDonald's protest. And I believe Julian Assange lived here at one point as well. So we have a a bit of a tradition in the hills, especially Tacoma, of being a bit mouthy. We were referred to as the town that roared at one point in the McDonald's protest, which was a great community building activity also. 
Um, what else have we, what else can I tell you about this? So when I was a young person, as a child, I, I grew up in Queensland and my, my family had, had been farmers at one point and my father was unable to continue in that, in that vocation, which were growing things on the land, working with the land. He was really, really sad about that. So he took up um, a strange occupation, you might say, four-wheel driving, which was a thing in the 70s. And, but it was good for us because he took us as children all over the, the land of Australia and I built a real relationship, a sentient, conscious relationship with the land of Australia and I, I won't say too much about that because it's a bit out there for some of us. <laughs> but I do feel that the land of Australia is aware um, and I think this is also an Indigenous idea and I have a personal lived experience of this. And I believe that the land is trying to parent us, trying to guide us. And I get very emotional talking about this, so I won't say too much about it, <laughs> as you can see. Right, you know, let's, let's try and... Okay, so someone else has asked me, what made you decide to host and facilitate an open forum? Well, we're sort of, these, these questions are a little bit interlinked, so um, I've covered some of that already, but I believe our community in, T in Tacoma, in the hills, is very equipped to do this. We've already had great training about piping up and speaking our truth and getting very upset about something with our McDonald's protest. That was really good work. Um, I also think our community really needs to talk about this. There's a lot of hidden violence um, I'm aware of in, in our community and I think we need to try and pull back the veil of secrecy and the veil of silence so that people who are living with this can receive some support and improve their quality of life, whether they pipe up or not. It's helpful to hear others talking about things that you're living with. Um, I'm also really tired with, I mean, I think this kind of violence, violence and violence against women, but violence in our community affects affects everybody and I'm exhausted with it being invisible and and being secret because it, it does produce strain in people's bodies, all kinds of medical conditions, not just the result of injuries, but being psychologically repressed or suppressed or imprisoned or ignored is damaging to everybody. It's not a good idea. So I've got I'm really I've got a dog I've just got to do something. I also believe in change and human potential. I believe we need to imagine and try new solutions to old problems and this one's a big one, this is a big solution we haven't sorted out yet as a, as a collective of human beings. I also am doing this, I'll try not to get too emotional, but I'm doing this because the land is, I feel is inspiring me to do this as well. So there's something here that wants us to have a go at not just sorting this problem out but trying to do community a little bit differently in, in this current age we're all living with. Okay, we're moving on, we're doing really well. <laughs> Number five question, let me see what I've got here. Okay, person says to, one of my clients asked me, how can I, how can I, how can I as a person or the forum as an activity have an impact. I'm just one person. Well, what on earth can I do? It's a good question. So as a counselling psych, I work a lot with the idea of human potential, like consolidating, building, expressing human potential. And one of the ways we do this is to pursue the idea of authenticity. This is a concept that a lot of people have been invoking lately, but in my understanding of authenticity, it is the most coherent expression of you as a, as a being. And most of us are only partially expressed for a whole variety of reasons. We haven't received, um, we haven't received support or enough education or economic, political reasons, many reasons we just haven't reached our potential as a person. But we can work on ourselves as an adult. We, we can use our own awareness to start to bring attention to the parts of us that are hidden or not expressed. And as we do this, we build a sense of coherence and congruence inside ourselves. And this is like a, a, a more robust, strong, healed expression of your potential and who you really are. Um, the role of being a listener, even if you don't speak at the forum, even if you're terrified, if you come and just listen to what is going on, that is a very, very powerful role. 
um, in my journey as a human being I've met many teachers so far and some of them have been um, Aboriginal elders and one of the elders explained to me the role of the land listening um, and always listening to us so it's a very powerful role it provides a container for others to work out conflicts and being a listener at, a, at an open forum helps the, the, the persons that are going to be or are willing to expose their story or share something that's quite difficult and contentious it gives them some support so that's one way you can participate and have an impact um, what else have we got here I think being a little bit curious and taking a small risk can have a massive effect on transforming your world of course we have to be smart and be safe about how we do that and there's lots of reasons not to take risks that's for sure um, but if we can be a little bit brave we can start trying to remake things try new things on and sooner or later we will find a solution <laughs> sort of inevitable some things will fit some things won't fit but we need to be a little bit willing to take a risk to change something um, the, the philosophy of authenticity also psychology is an enormous subject it's an enormous discipline um, but there is an idea of, of me the parts of me that I'm comfortable with the happy not depressed let's say um, socially acceptable parts these parts are easy to express but there's also parts that we like to say are not me and they're like maybe a shadow part of ourselves like a very angry or vulnerable or ill or sick or, or or small or weak these parts can be not very attractive and they're sort of parts we don't want to own and this is called a conflict and these kinds of conflicts can be expressed internally within us but they can also be expressed outside in our communities so there are people that you kind of want to be friends with maybe and there are people that we are very uncomfortable around so it's not easy to be around a, say a homeless person who maybe smells of urine or alcohol or even vomit that's a very uncomfortable thing to be around for most of us but this is a, still a human being it's still part of our community and they're expressing something that's very hard for us to deal with as a group or on an individual level so if you go as one little person and have a try to bravely encounter these parts that are uncomfortable and have a dialogue with them try and make a connection with them it can have an enormous effect on our community and, and your life in particular, just as one person, it can start to change the world that you live in and the way you relate to it. So it's not as it's not as small as we might think. We also team we need new ways to solve an old problem. This is an old problem, this one. We've got to try and talk about it to see if we can find a new way. Now I have another little thing to share. One of my on my, I've had many teachers as I said but one of the teachers I, I have learned of um, and this comes through in herbal medicine a little bit traditional herbal medicine um, uses plants in, in different ways one is a, a medicine a little bit like a, a pharmaceutical drug that we might receive on a prescription from a doctor but also traditional herbalism uses essences of plants to heal as well and that's a very hard thing to explain in simple ways but um, our indigenous elders would, would embrace this idea. Traditional herbal medicine comes from indigenous cultures. And they also use animal symbols as well to help them understand different ways of expressing parts of our, our psyche as a human being. And the one that I'm, I'm going to suggest we might need to use at the forum is called black swan dreaming. What, what, is, what is black swan dreaming? Well, Jung talks a little bit about how to how important animals are when they show up in dreams how they help us connect to parts of ourselves that we might put in the not me camp so black swan dreaming as I understand it and as it was taught to me describes a way of dealing with conflict and it comes from watching the black swans as they do their courting dance so they come up to each other and they do a lovely big display of their feathers and they puff, puff themselves up and they sort of move around each other like this. They don't lean on each other, they don't attack each other, they just, they just meet and they hold the tension and they, they play their part. And from this, this observation, you might say, the learning that, that was taught to me is that when we're dealing with a conflict, it's very important to allow one person to speak and speak their truth until they are finished. 
and then the other person is needs the same respect and space speaks their piece until they are finished and the community holds the space while this happens so this is a this is an important indigenous teaching maybe we're going to need to lean on a little bit it was called black swan dreaming right oh here's another good this is another important idea when you change even a little bit everybody connected to you is affected by that change so if you're moving towards trying to become a bit more authentic a bit more coherent a bit more truthful maybe even a bit more brave a bit more courageous then everybody who knows you starts to feel that change and I have seen this happen in families when one person starts to work on themselves over time the entire family network starts to change as well so it really can happen it really can work I've seen it I've helped do it Rightio, now what are we moving on to now? Let's have a look. Next question, why should I come? It's a good question, why should you come? <laughs> well, if you feel this, this issue of women and violence is such a massive topic, I think we've kind of got two choices. We can either try and deal with it or we can ignore it and hope it goes away. So if you feel powerless, invisible, blamed, if you feel like you have to keep a secret or even ashamed, or if you feel like you've been part of creating the problem in any way and feel guilty and horrible about that, you should totally come. <laughs> you don't have to say anything, but you should. But others will speak about these topics and you will feel some relief watching this conflict be attempted to, to have dialogue about it, like try and have a dialogue about it. You'll feel better. You'll feel like you had a try, to. you offered some kind of support within the limits of what you can offer. All right, now what else have we got? Um, we, we in a, why should you come? We're gonna try and, and see if we can rebuild culture. It's a very ambitious goal, but we're gonna have a try. And if we, if we can do it once, we might be able to do it again. And around an issue of conflict, rather than avoiding the conflict and pretending it's not there, we're gonna try and have a slow, authentic, real, supported, facilitated conversation about this. So that's why you should come. You should come because we need you. Whatever you're feeling, whatever you're thinking, whatever your history, whoever you are, we need you to come because you're part of the community. Okay, number seven question. So some, one of the persons I work with said to me, you know what, I feel afraid, I'm living with violence right now, I don't feel safe to come, I don't feel safe to speak, will I be excluded? Now this is a really important topic because, you know, people are living in violence at the moment and it is, and there's a huge pressure to keep it secret. It is a dangerous topic as well, there's a lot of, a lot of fear around this, okay, that, and that's not when, you know, that's true. You're the best person to determine whether or not it's safe for you to come. And if it's, if you're going to come, you also have to determine how you're going to participate, what you're going to share or not share or say or not say. You're the best person to know that. What we're going to do, or what the plan is, the dream is, we're going to try really, really hard to produce a video record of what happens at the forum. So that if you really can't come, and that's your call, it's your decision to make, I hope to make this available to you afterwards so that you can privately watch it and see what other people will say about this hot topic. So that's what that's a, that's my best answer to that question. Okay, number eight. What will really change if we do this? It's a good question. What will really change? This is such a big answer to this. So if we, I'd love to get into the quantum physics about this, but. But let's keep it on, on something we're all comfortable with, something we know. The problem is overwhelming. What will change? We don't know. That's the whole, that's why we're going to have a, that's why I'm encouraging people to have a try at this. We don't know what's going to change. It's probably not going to be nothing, even if it only affects the people who come to the forum. That's a good thing. You feel, even if you only feel just a little bit less alone, that'd be a good thing. 
the change happens in a direct way but it also can happen in an indirect way and it can, and it can happen over time and I think the medicine that I was taught about black swan dreaming is about the power of a dialogue having a dialogue we don't know how I mean me too started with a dialogue and so many people jumped on the on to the conversation and said you know what it's happening to me as well this project came out of the me too it's called a movement I suppose it is um, we're going to leave a record of what we do and, and if if people are keen we're going to try and do it again on a different topic something that might affect men in our community that we'll see how we go if, if we're brave enough and courageous enough we'll, we might do it again we don't know that the medicine of a dialogue it, it can heal and it can rebuild culture but we don't know what will change yet we haven't done it we have, so we have to have a try and see I can't answer that question for sure but something will happen something will be different even if it's only you you're different because you came and you witnessed people speak up and say things that you couldn't speak or you came and you spoke about things that have happened to you and you had people witness it and listen to you and not avoid you or push, push you back behind that curtain that's a good thing right it will be an opportunity for voices to be heard and listened to and space will be held for that. That's powerful. Having your story witnessed produces change, even if it's only within you. But it's most likely also going to produce change in everybody who can hear you speak. And that means the people at the forum, but also if we make the video, people, you don't know how many people you're going to reach. You just don't know. Me too had no idea how many people it was going to reach. Right. Oh dear. I think we've run out of time, team. Um, I'm going to have to say goodbye. So that's the launch. I really hope you're going to come. Um, thanks for watching, even if you see this later in time. And, and um, good to meet you. I hope I see you in person. Well, now I've got to finish. Okay. All right. Bye for now. Bye, everyone. Bye.